Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Over here in the Northeast, the weather has been absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm making this now. It's, uh, it's actually Saturday evening for Monday's video. You know, it takes a couple days to get all together. And uh, a couple things I want to talk about. First of all, tomorrow I have a plans to go to Elephant's Trunk, so hopefully we'll get some footage in on there. But uh, I wanted to get some tools in beforehand. Uh, we have a couple tools. One I wanted to restore, a nice Dasco Eagle Claw Wrench, and uh, I always like those. And uh, another one is a, a, a mystery tool. So let's get right to the mystery tool, see what the heck this is. Okay, here is the mystery tool. I have no idea what this tool is. Uh, it's been knocking around down here for a while. It's a pretty big tool. It's about 14 inches long. And, uh, I, you know, I got to tell you, I bought this. I don't, I don't know why, but I just thought it was pretty ominous. Let me show you the markings that are on here. First of all, you see this here? This uh, lettering, could you make that out? Okay, I took it over to the wire brush just under that name. And you can see it's F period Dick. And it has an arrow on it. And, uh, and then there's another markings over here. Let me see where they are. Uh, in the bottom here, right here, there's two little markings here. If you look real close, again, I'll try and get the lighting, but under here, there's some initials. Okay, here we go. It says UM in two spots. You see it? One, two, UM. Now, what's interesting is, like I said, it's a big tool, but here's the ominous looking section. You know, Armando said, let's get a uh, Halloween tool going. And I'm telling you, this one here looks like about as ominous as you can get as far as a tool. It's spring-loaded, so it wants to stay open to about that size. Looks like sort of a beak. And look how big that is. It's not a little tool here. That's almost, you know, five inches. And it's very sharp here. Very sharp here. I mean, it looks like... And it's meant to, like to pierce and, or or something. And it's, it's hollow-jawed. Anybody know what this tool is? Uh, I think it's pretty interesting. Let's have a discussion, find out what this is. And, uh, and then it will clean it up for next uh, show. Okay, for today's project, we have this nice Dasco. I always like these. You know why? Uh, I just like the way they look. I, you know, look at that jaw here. Isn't that, so, I don't know what that's all about. And this one here, it was, here's the problem. It was peened over or something. Looks like somebody was banging on this part. So it's got a little damage there. But uh, we're going to try and take this apart. Uh, a lot of times some of these are chipped, you know, so these teeth are in good shape. We'll take a look. It doesn't look like it was beat on at all, really. And uh, it's just, you know, it's got some dings and dents in it from wear and tear. And it looks like it was plated of some type of plating. It's worn off. And um, I just thought this would be a fun. I always like these. And, and you can see what the writing here says. On this side says Dasco. On this side here... If you look real close, you could see what remnants of it. And we'll probably lose this for sure. It says uh, Eagle Claw Wrench. And uh, it says Patent February. And it does, you know, I don't see a date on there. But again, sometimes when you look through the camera, you can't see it as good. And uh, we'll talk about it's Rockford, Illinois is where it was made. And, uh, you know, I did another uh, couple of these, actually. I, I don't know. I like the, the jaws, the style. Again, never use these type wrenches. Never use them. Just it's, it's an interesting looking wrench. So let's get to it. Okay, here's can. the plan on this. Uh, you can see here they peened over, which is common practice, so that it won't loosen up. But uh, you know what we're going to do is we're going to put a little, apply a little heat to here, and then we're going to take an uh, adjustable wrench, put a little 50/50 acetone on there, and then take this and try and uh, work this out to raise up the peening, and then take that nut off. So this is the uh, difficult part here. Okay, we got a little bit of movement. Again, don't be uh, stingy with the 50-50. Let it soak in there. And uh, it's not super, we only warmed it up a little bit. But you see, we're gonna work this back and forth, you see? We're gonna work this nut back and forth. Let the 50-50 get in those threads. And that'll help when we try and really lift these, uh, that flange that's banged over, peened over when we lift it up. So now we're gonna apply some Okay, force. again, these are hard to make if you have to make them. So it's so much easier to take the extra time and uh, we'll, we'll clean this up good. But you can see we straightened that out. 
And uh, now we'll punch this out from now, the Now, I side. remember from the last time I did this wrench, this is the most this, this is the most difficult part of uh, restoring this wrench is getting this nut out. Once that's flanged over, you know, this is such a tight fit in here. You have to use a punch and uh, and then whale it out this way until it clears. It'll clear the, uh, you can see here, and uh, that's how you get that out. And it's a very tight fit. That's why it's, uh, that's an important part of this restoration. Okay, normally we do a post-wire brush evaluation, but we're not going to wire brush this because it does have some remnants of a coating. And a lot of times they used to use like a cadmium or something uh, coating. They're not really healthy to breathe in. So I'm just going to take it right to the next step, which is the uh, grinding wheel, which I have my ventilation system set up over there. And um, if I, I'm emphasizing a lot of work on this because if you're going to do one of these, I've done three, three of these before. This is your biggest issue. A lot of these wrenches will come, they'll be loose and uh, sloppy because these nuts, they, they're just always difficult. So uh, that's why this one was probably banged down and peened over. Remember what that looks like. So here's your biggest issue. Once you get, you get this nut off, when they peen that nut down, look, it, it deforms the thread. So I took a file and reprofiled the threads, but it will deform it and it leaves these leaves up there. That's okay to leave them on because you're going to bend them back down. But uh, that's this is where you're going to spend most of your time on this wrench, believe it or not. So that's why I'm emphasizing that. If you're going to do one of these, be prepared to spend some time on this. Okay, we got an, uh, an hour and a half or so into this ranch, and you can see it's coming nice, right? But here's where people, you know, you, you walk that line. Remember, and I always try and keep the name, but look at this here. You see that? The name is there. It's still legible. That's as far as I could go if I want to keep the name, but it, it looks like garbage. You know what I mean? Because you still got this residual, you know, uh, plating. It's just, for me, I, I don't know. It's just not worth it. I mean, the first thing you're going to see when somebody sees that wrench, you can say, well, you know, it looks like you just wire brushed it. You really didn't do nothing to the wrench. So that's why, you know, a lot of times, um, especially if it's a, a wrench like this, a common wrench, not an expensive wrench, you just, you know, you got to, you, you walk that line. You got to do what you have to do. Everything's coming real good, and I just want to show you one thing while it's apart. You know, during the 1920s, when this wrench was made, uh, they came out with a special steel that they haven't uh, had since. Or, And I'll tell you, it was like a virgin steel, no recycling. It was just pure, and they were really at the top of the game. And you could tell when you get some of these tools, listen to this. You hear how hard that sounds, almost like glass. Well, that's what happens when you uh, get this kind of steel. It's uh, it's super hard, and uh, you know that's why these tools. I love tools from the twenties. Let's put this together. And you know my favorite part. Remember what these Dasco Eagle Claw pliers look like before we started. And we are calling this project done. Let me tell you a little bit about the slip joint pliers. Uh, these pliers were invented somewhere around 1914, and uh, Dasco bought the uh, patent to produce them. And Dasco uh, stood for Damascus Steel Products. Uh, they were uh, they came about in about 1920, 1921 as the company. Uh, they used to make all kinds of punches, chisels. That's why these steels were so hard. They're forged steels. Now, uh, Dasco, this was, uh, again, the slip joint pliers. This uh, model was uh, 302. It was their 300 series, and uh, 302 was the uh, most popular, the 10-inch model. Um, you can see what we did here. We polished everything out where it's, it's a really, you know, uh, enjoyable wrench and and especially around the edges and took all the forge lines off uh weren't able to get keep fully but you could still make out the name uh i'm sorry it's upside down you could still make it out um the damascus uh <clears throat> the dasco trademark over the eagle claw pliers uh main thing is i want the handles nice and i wanted to demonstrate this wrench because you got to remember something back then uh Claw, you know, slip joint pliers were, you know, uh, were, were, were quite the rage, and there's a good reason for it. Uh, you remember what the uh, 
the bolt looked like, how it was all banged up. We got that real nice. Same thing with this side. And uh, what we did was after we tightened it down and peened it down, we ran it over the belt sand to give it an even more nice appearance. It's a brushed finish. It's got the, uh, the jaws are absolutely pristine. Don't look like they've ever really done any kind of work. But I would like to show you how this wrench uh, or ply, slip joint plies works and give you some of the uh, the benefits of this beautiful tool and why I like it so much. Now, first off, the tighter your hand closes, the stronger it gets. So in other words, your hand is much stronger this way than it is this way as far as gripping. And that's what the idea behind the slip joint plies was to get these handles close so you can get a good grip on it and a good purchase onto the tool and whatever item you're working on. Now, we've all had this issue before with the... Uh, with the adjustable wrench and you know how you're supposed to turn it in one direction in all honesty it works in both directions you know you won't notice really any difference when you're working from one direction or the other but it might be just a little bit stronger as far as mechanism goes if you if you do it in this direction however with slip joint pliers it's imperative that you use them in the right direction and I'll show you why now if you look at the teeth of most uh, slip joint pliers the top jaw will have the teeth angling this way. The bottom jaw, the teeth will be angled that way. And that goes even with with modern, here's a pair of channel locks, you could see that the bottom jaws point out, the top jaws point in. And that's so, when you place this here onto, let me just get this straight, when you uh, place this here onto a pipe or something round, you are supposed to exert pressure going down if you wanted to turn it in a clockwise rotation like this. Now, if you wanted to turn it the other way, a lot of people grip it like this and pull it up. It's only going to slip, not just because of the teeth, but because of the handle. You see, because when you apply pressure on here, it gives you force that's going to help you. If you're pulling this way, it's going to move this the other way and slip. So if you wanted to turn this counterclockwise, you should go under the pipe, grip it like this, and pull up. So always remember that these are definitely always meant to work in one thing to look at these eagle claws had a very short beak to it very short compared to a normal uh, slip joint which had a little bit longer the shorter beak actually gave you more uh, strength because the leverage works against you with a longer beak and I'll demonstrate that on this piece of wood now here. here we just chalked up a piece of wood in a vise you can see we locked this up here now look how close these handles are. You see how close? I could get a tremendous amount of force on here because it's it's tight and that's rock solid. Now watch when I exert some pressure, that'll snap that piece of wood right off. I mean, with no no problem whatsoever. Extremely now, another strong. Another interesting feature is you could see these uh, this claw in the front. Two on the top, one on the bottom. This was uh, touted in their catalog that it could remove a carriage bolt. You know, sometimes carriage bolts are a little bit hard to get out. And if you take a, a soft blow hammer we're going to use here, and you could just wrap it around. There's a little pounding spot back there. And you could just pound this down around the bolt. And you could see I get a nice grip on that bolt. And I could raise it right up. And you could see here, that'll allow me to get that bolt out of there with uh, with very little effort. Now my dad always had a pair of these in the toolbox and I just found them really interesting. Again, the thick handles are very comfortable when you grip it. Um, nice and smooth here. And, uh, and it has a lot. I know that Chuck from 357 Magdad's channel, you know, he, he likes it just because of the way it looks with that little beak thing in the, uh, that little eagle claw insignia. Okay, we fitted in a quite a bit of uh, mosh today for a Monday. Hope you have a great week, great start of a week. Take care now. Bye-bye.